everyone, it's Five Minutes with Eric. I'm Eric Rodebois, VPGD Attorneys at Law. And what I want to talk about in a little more detail is charitable giving. And so in particular, I want to talk about charitable giving through an estate. So first, let's talk about what's an estate. So an estate is all your assets after you pass away. So the second you pass away, everything that you own becomes your estate. Now, there's certain planning tricks you can do ahead of time. So for example, if I have a bank account, but I put a beneficiary designation on there, like it automatically goes to my mom or my significant other, then that will not be part of my estate. So part of that process of creating the estate is the next of kin, usually your closest family member or whoever ends up being what's called your personal representative is gonna go through and they're gonna look at, okay, which assets are included in the estate and which assets are not included in the estate. Okay, so that's the basics. Now, what happens when you pass away? What happens to your estate? Well, there's three different options. So option number one is if you don't have a will and you don't have a trust. So in other words, you did no planning. And the law, it's called the law of intestacy, will give you a will. What does that really mean? So there's a law that basically looks at your family tree and it says, okay, you're married, you've got kids, you don't have kids, you're not married, and it'll look at your family tree and it'll just give the assets to those family members. And so there's no discretion, there's no opportunity for you to say, well, I don't like this family member, or I do like this one, or there's this one cousin I wanna make sure that I include. Or for example, my godson is a first cousin once removed. He would never be included in my, in my intestacy uh, estate. And so intestacy is bad. It also has to go through probate. And so probate is the courthouse downtown here in Miami-Dade County. It's taking about 18 months if you're lucky, if you have a full summary administration. Um, okay, so then the second way that we can pass assets after we die through our estate is with a will. So the good thing about a will is we can do some planning. We can include the family members we like or the family members we don't like, we can exclude them. We can include charitable bequests. So what's a bequest? It's where we're giving something to a charity and it's included in our estate plan. So it's in our will. So I can say, I want $10,000 to the Jesuit high school. I want $20,000 to the American Cancer Society. I want $5,000 to the local Rotary Club. I want $15,000 to the um, Coral Gables Community Foundation. Or I can make a general bequest where I say, whatever's left over after I give this, this, and this to these people, I want it to go to my alma mater, just as an example, or the foundation or the, the charity of my choosing. Okay, so the good news is we can create our plan. The bad news is that plan will still have to go through the probate court. So your next of kin, your family, your kids, your spouse are gonna have to hire a lawyer and they're gonna have to go through the process and it could take up to 18 months um, or maybe 18 months if you're lucky. And so what's our third option? Our third option is we create a trust. Now the trust is generally created while we're alive. It's called a living trust if it is created while we're alive. There's another kind of trust called a testamentary trust Testamentary trust is one that's created in our will. Problem is that will still has to go through probate, but in the will you can say, and I hold these assets in trust for my nephew or for whatever you want it to be. So you can create a testamentary trust, which will become a trust. It just will be through your will. Um, now, if you create a living trust, then that means you can create all your planning in advance while you're alive. And what are the two benefits? Well, the first benefit is the same as a will, meaning we don't have to um, leave everything to the law of intestacy. We can be discreet. We can say that I like this family member, I don't like this one, and here's the list of charities I wanna support. And, um, and so we can do all that neat planning in the trust, but here's the real benefit. We can avoid the probate. We can avoid the 18 months and avoid the lawyer. And the third benefit I, I forgot to mention is that we can create a plan that will last for years and years. That's the benefit of a trust. So here's an example. My godson is 13 years old. He's awesome. I hope he lives a really long time. So I want to leave him some money. So I could either give it to him directly. Well, 13 year olds really don't inherit anything until they turn 18. That's the law of majority. And so his parents or his guardian would manage that gift or that, that inheritance until he turns 18. So obviously we gotta trust them that they're, gonna, they're not gonna mismanage it. They're not gonna spend it on other random things. And on his 18th birthday, for better or for worse, he will get whatever there is. And the problem with that is a lot of 18 year olds are not that responsible, right? Or maybe his parents aren't good at managing money and they're gonna spend it on themselves. So um, what's a more efficient thing we can do? Well, with the trust, I can say, I want it held for his benefit for health, education, support, and maintenance 
with specific uh, amounts that can be given to them every year, managed by a trustee that I choose, either uh, a, tr a friend or family that I really, really trust, or a professional trustee, which is actually services that are provided sometimes by lawyers or by trust companies or by banks. And what they do is it's their fiduciary duty to just follow the instructions in the trust. And then what we can do is have that be drawn out until he turns 30. Well, if he's 13 today and I die tomorrow, that means that the trust is gonna last for 17 years or maybe until he's 40, right? So that's 27 years or maybe until later on. So the point I'm making is that my trust, I can create a plan that will last for many years. Or maybe I say until he graduates from college, and I'll support his college education, but then whatever's left over, I don't want him to get a free ride, then I want that to go to a charity, right? So I provided for my godson until he turns whatever, probably 22 when he finishes university, and then whatever money's left over that he hasn't needed for books or tuition, then that is gonna go to the American Cancer Society or the Coral Gables Community Foundation. All right, guys, so those are the three ways that we can pass our estate on to our next of kin. The first way, there's no planning involved, it's bad probate uh, intestacy. Second way, planning, but also probate, that's your will. And the third way is a trust. Trust is really the best way. We can be nuanced, we can do cool things. So you guys have any questions about charitable giving, about bequests, about estate planning in general, give me a call. Thanks.